Hello, welcome back to the Villa View today. A special video, you might recognise this guy on my left from Soccer AM and mostly Tubes' is Instagram. Your hair used to make quite <laughs> a lot of appearances it's on like Tubes' Instagram. It, it yeah, it. Because Getting of Tubes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all Pete's fault. All Pete's fault. So Stu is a big Brentford fan, Brentford season ticket holder and yeah. luckily for us he's feeling good enough to, yeah. to come down and speak to us about Dean Smith so we can try and find out a little bit more about him. For start, it's actually nice to get one over Brentford for once. Cause since <laughs> since we've been in the league, we haven't beat you. We haven't well, done anything. Well, you you can to try and do it. Obviously, first of all, you try and buy our top scorer. Yeah. That didn't work out for you. So now you've gone, well, we've got to go for the juggler. We've got to go for the gaffer. Fair play to you. Yeah, I mean, we have done well against you since you've been in the league with us. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens next, really. And I don't know, from our point of view, is I think you'd struggle to find a Brentford fan that begrudges this move. For yeah. You. It's ridiculous. It's a very weird thing. When I when I first saw the news, it seemed to happen really quickly. All of a sudden, Farry had kind of got ruled out, and then it was like maybe Smith. Then about an hour later, Smith's gone. Yeah, my heart did sink like it does. It's gutting. It was that kind of like heartbreak feeling. But then it was kind of like you know what? And it's, this is the the measure of the man. Everyone was kind of like he deserves this chance to manage his boyhood club. He's and that's just because of what a great guy he is. And it was weird. It's so weird. You won't find a Brentford fan on Twitter that last night would have been going why has he done that what, he's out of order they all understand it it's, it's it's such a strange feeling that I was gutted but I wasn't angry at any point I wasn't like disappointed I was I'm not proud that, for, for him I'm just happy for him yeah. at the same time which is a weird thing because obviously we've lost the figurehead of our football club but I don't know that there was that heartbreak but then I was like really chuffed for him in a weird way I was going to say is, is that more to do with the fact that he's a Villa fan and he's got that boyhood move or is it more to do with the fact that actually he's done a really good job at Brentford I think it's a bit of both so I think the Villa stuff straight away like every time we play you it comes up yeah. Dean Smith's a Villa fan he's got relatives that are stewards and stuff like that and he used to stand on the whole end or whatever it was when he was a boy and that comes up every time and every time you've had a manager leave or Bruce is going through a tough patch it's come up, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's come up that Smith's going to be the one in the run, and we've 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 seen that so much. But I think, I think the way he's carried himself for the whole time during that, he could have played on it more and gone, yeah, I love Villa, I want to do this and that. But even recently, when he was linked, he he didn't do that. He was kind of like, look, I've had no contact from them. I'm really happy for what I do here, and the way he's carried himself since he's been at Brentford has been incredible. I know he's still got family up that way, so again, we understand that, but. He's such a personable man with fans, players, um, opposing managers, just every, the media, everything about him is just so likeable that you don't begrudge him any of it because you know that he's also grafted. He's come from Walsall to us. Before that, he was yeah. at the Nike Academy before that. So he's not that he's kind of been offered everything on a plate. He's grafted for everything that he's done. And he's done such an amazing job. We go back. I don't want to make this too much about Brentford, but no, we've had fine. we've had Rosler, and everyone thought it was the end of the world when Rosler left. We had Warburton, and everyone thought it was the end of the world when he left. And then Dykehausen was wasn't great in between. But then we Dean Smith came in, and it, it every time he seems to do better and better each time. And for him to take us on another level from the level we were at with Warburton has been incredible. And he has done an amazing job. And I'm sure we'll get onto it soon. That it's not just been him that has got us to this level. Yeah. Which again, I think is why if Brentford fans are less angry or upset because they know there's a bigger picture here. But we're just so happy for him, it's weird. And I think when he comes back to us in February, he's going to get a hell of a reception. There won't be one Brent fan. I, I, I'd be surprised if there's a Brent fan that doesn't get up and applaud him and sing his name because he deserves yeah. it. And they're just so grateful for everything he's done for us. Whenever yeah. you lose anyone, I always think, well, they'll just find someone else. Yeah. Is he like that with the manager as well? Or, or is Dean Smith that, that important to it? I think that I think it is that with the manager. I think hence why no, there hasn't been this outcry and panic from all the fans because there is such a great setup there that I think people appreciate that. Don't get me wrong, Dean Smith was a vital and really important cog in this yeah. whole wheel, but he wasn't the be all and end all of it. There's so many people around it. Thomas Frank, who it looks like is probably going to take over. Rob Rowan does some fantastic work. Lars Fries, Rasmus Ankerson as well. It's such a bigger picture. There's also play people that we don't know the names of. I know for a fact that we've got kind of kicking coaches and stuff like that that That's have gone under innovative. the radar. Yeah, a lot of in innovative stuff like that. So Dean Smith, fantastic man manager. The players adored him. The fans adored him. So personable. Again, brought a brilliant style of play that he was playing at Walsall to us. But I think he was part of a bigger picture. And I think it. 
you have clubs where the manager is totalitarian. It's his his role. He runs everything. With yeah. us, it's very much everyone's got a voice. Everyone talks. He had two assistants at our place. He had a, then a load of coaches around him. Then he had sporting directors, technical directors. It's very much a democratic process, and I think he was a head coach. That's another big thing. He's a head yeah, coach. He's our our head coach, as head well, coach I think, which yeah. tells another story that it's not always. It's not all pressure on him. It's not everything that he says. Obviously, he probably has his final say on a lot of stuff and most stuff. Yeah. But they, it, the bigger picture is there's so many people involved that I think it will continue that way for us. And whilst I do think you've got one of the most exciting managers in the league, if not the exciting manager, I'm not devastated because I know how run, well run our club is. And yeah. like I touched on there with Frank, Thomas Frank, he came in about a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and it was a very strange move straight away. You're going, well, we, he's already got Richard O'Kelly there. Why have we brought in the guy that used to manage Bromby, which is a, a big club, if you think about it. Yeah. To come in as an assistant manager at a club like us, you kind of go, right, this is a bit strange. But obviously the club are thinking, if this does happen one day, we've got someone ready that can 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 move in. Because the thing about us, we had a good window. I know people were saying you lost Ryan Woods, which was a blow. He's an unbelievable player. Every Class Villa player. fan watching this will, will say, what, what a player. Yeah, phenomenal player. The emergence of McEachran so far this season's kind of softened that blow. But apart from from Woods, we're going into this window, going out of this window, going. You know what? We kept hold of Methan, we kept hold of Watkins. Um, There's rumours of Sawyer's going, we had, and more pay going. We actually did all right. We could yeah. have maybe done with another striker. This is our year then to kind of push on and get that top six, like I said, or who knows, top two. The worry then is if you lose your manager you can be derailed completely because you need to maybe take a gamble on someone coming in at the moment from, I don't know, Portugal, Spain, or even the lower leagues, or an assistant at a higher team or something, or even someone from your own. Yeah, we were linked with all sorts, so that tells you exactly. there's a lot of people around. So you don't know, you could get someone in, and if they don't pay off, that's the season gone again. And this is our best chance this year. So if you then appoint from within someone that knows the setup, knows the project, knows the players inside out, has been heavily involved in the style of play and the way you play the tactics, you'd have thought that continual upward curve can continue. Yeah. Whereas if you went, for example, say Henri, I know he probably wouldn't have come to us, say we had a point on Henri. Yeah. You don't know how that's going to turn out. That could go either two ways. Whereas with Frank, you kind of have an idea that it will probably be fairly similar. A bit of continuity. Exactly. It's yeah. continuity rather than radical upheaval when we've had a great start to the season. We're seventh or sixth, I think. I should know that. <laughs> um, but do you see what I mean? It, it's not kind of. It may say it makes sense, and it's again. Look, if Thomas Frank doesn't get this job, I'm proved completely wrong. But I think he will, and it's just again intelligence from our board. I think to go. Look, we just carry on going. Nothing's going to change here. The only worry is, then obviously Dean Smith will know a lot about the way we set up and the way we play. But then I imagine Thomas Frank will have maybe a bit more influence now than he did yeah. before. Are you surprised that Dean Smith? Well, not, not surprised. Obviously, not surprised he's come to Villa. Are you surprised? No one that no one's coming for him earlier. And two, do you think that this is the, he, say if uh, anyone else had come in for him in the league? Uh, I don't want to say a bigger team because I don't want to be disrespectful. But yeah. obviously, you, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. If anyone else had come in, do you think he would have gone, or do you think it's because it's Villa he's gone? I think it's because it's Villa. Yeah, I genuinely do. I think the way he spoke about us, the project, and I, I haven't had too many conversations with him myself but when I have the way he speaks about how much he loves it at, how much he loved it at Brentford yeah. I've got to get used to saying that now um, I'd be so surprised if he would have left for anyone else I think his love for Villa is massive Yeah, it's a great opportunity for him to make himself a hero at his boyhood club as well and get you that promotion You, from the outside looking in you've still got a phenomenal squad in my opinion they're already Probably, four points off top six as well exactly you're not exactly struggling and that league's so tight as it is at the moment horrible it, it, league it's, it's it's a great time to come in for him as well. Yeah. Especially when there's been the turmoil with Bruce and stuff like that. And I think he's got an opportunity here to make himself a real hero at the club he loves. So that's again why no one can begrudge him. But I'd be surprised if I would have been surprised if he'd gone anywhere yeah. else. I, th I think only Villa would have tempted him. What what is it we we get in? Because I, when I think of him, I think because of the Warsaw stuff as well. I think oh, he plays a really really attractive brand of football. But what what is it that we are getting at Villa with him? That that immediately, like the football is phenomenal, quick, one touch, two touch. It's tight spaces. Yeah. So you, there's so many amazing little tight triangles around the box. I'd be surprised if you see many long shots. Um, he, he, we, we rarely take a long shot Everything to the point is. that 
passing builder. Yeah, to the point they were sometimes royal fans at times. Um, yeah, I mean, set pieces we're massive on, but again, I don't know how much that was Dean's influence. Yeah. They, we've obviously had set piece coaches for a while. Um, yeah, the, the football's slick. All our players have become so... The ones that are there already have become even better on the ball and more confident and at ease with the ball. And the ones we've recruited are all first and foremost players that can play on the on with their feet. I spoke to a couple of players about when they joined Esri Concert and Johan Barbe. They said when they joined Brentford, they were explicitly kind of doing it because they knew they could get on the ball as yeah. defenders. Your, your back four will have so much of the ball and be on the ball so much. So hopefully, well, if you've got enough defenders. <laughs> Mate, we've only got, you probably can't on one hand the amount of but defenders if got, if we've got. you're playing... Um, I've seen you play Jedinak at the back and stuff like that. And, yeah. but, but players that can play, they'll do brilliantly at the back. Full-backs will be bombing right on. That's the thing, we ain't got any of them either at the moment. Oh, it could be, could, be a lot, could, could, could be a long wait till January. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, full-backs bomb on. The, the, um, he's, he's predominantly played kind of more pay with Watkins or Canos or Ben Rama kind of. It's almost like a three up front, but there's yeah. also sometimes it looks like McEachran sits in front. And then McLeod and Sawyer's play a lot further forward, and it kind of McEachern a bit of a quarterback role. Yeah, Sawyer's has been phenomenal for us. That's a worry if he comes in for him in January. But to, be, to be honest, I look at our midfield and attack, and I'm sure Dean Smith looks at it as well, and he must be licking his lips and thinking, "There's some good players." So immediately you think Jack really is going to love, oh, going to love yeah. playing for Dean Smith. Do you think he's? Do you think he's going to get a real tune yeah. out of him? And I think the other thing is because Watkins and, and Canos are the two wide men. So often you'll see them float. They they drift in a hell of a lot. Canos isn't really a wide man, is he? No. I'd have him down as a number ten in my head. Yeah, and well, uh, and Watkins as well. Watkins often play on the left, but he's so good at coming inside. You saw it with Yotta as well when he was with us. Yeah, he play on the right and he drift in so much. And one thing I notice a lot of the time when our centre half will get the ball or McKechnie will get the ball, a lot of time our wingers will exclusively run in, run inside, and then our, the fullbacks just go. Okay, and it is it's brilliant to watch and. Yeah, it's going to be exciting for you guys. I'd be very surprised if you weren't just loving it. The, the one man straight away is Hogan. Ah, uh, mate. He was incredible under Smith. And I, I think he's brilliant. I, I was a bit gutted to... He's another one that no one resents moving on. I think he's, he's brilliant. He was great for us and we got fantastic money for him. As soon as I saw Smith has gone there, I was like, wow, Hogan's going to have a great time. And I'd be te I'm tempted now to put a little bit of money on him finishing around the top scorer thing because he was that good under Smith how, how good how good was because we haven't seen the best of him and I think he's a, a great player he just yeah. Bruce's tactics and playing playing for Villa I think it's been really difficult for him and he, there was an interview with him yesterday in the yeah. Daily Mail and he, he sounded traumatised yeah, I'm going to be honest but how good was he under Smith oh he's phenomenal he's prolific, his wasn't movement it? is incredible um, he's he's got a turn of pace yeah. he's just intelligent is everything around the box and I think because where we do build the ball up build the ball up you'll have all the ball you'll have you'll have games where the other team won't touch the ball well, you'll we're, be going we're side, not used to side, that side, at all. side to side you'll go away to Leeds like we did the other day look Leeds did have more possession but I think we won a few teams that matched them for possession yeah. we've gone to Stoke we've gone to places where we, sometimes we have 71% possession and like, you get the moaners going get it forward get it forward but you'll hear a lot of that the, the thing is you they're going left and right, and it, the only th criticism sometimes is be we can't break teams down. We can't break them, like that cutting edge. I saw McEachern talking about it. we need to be, be a bit cuter with that. But you'll have you'll have all the ball, and I think that's what suits Hogan sometimes is that killer little ball through. Because yeah, we've not we've not played like that. It's all yeah. it's a slow build. It's been a slow build up under yeah. Bruce. It's, it was effective last season because we were good at the back. Yeah. But this season we have not been good at the back, so it's been difficult. Yeah, we'll go like slow around the back, round the back. We'll get it forward, and as soon as it goes forward, it's bang, but it's quick. Yeah. So McEachern will play it into someone. More pay will lay it off, and then it'll be short, sharp, quick across. More pay for Hogan. It's, it's that kind of football. It's like one touch, one touch. It's a lot around kind of the right hand side of the box, the left hand side of the box, and out of nowhere, it's like they just pounce. They yeah. see their opportunity and they just on it, and then it's just like wow, it, it, it's it, it's so quick and electric. I'm excited. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how it does work. I'm, I'm thinking of the other players that you've got, kind of Mohammed El Mohammadi at fullback is going to have a great time just bombing on. Okay. And... Bre, who hasn't really played, he's the one I'm looking at. And thinking, oh, really? Hopefully, he's going to get a run now. Young, energetic fullback, like, yeah. but because we've been so defensive, he's not had a chance to to right. show himself in a, in a good light at all. So yeah, yeah. I mean, really, we haven't we haven't played so much out and out wingers, so I don't know how we've got a lot of wingers that are kind of like byline cross it. Yeah, 
we won't we don't we don't cross the ball very often it's did you think it was you scored you scored that cross and oh, then yeah, header across yeah. and scored against I us was and that going, was quick yeah but I, even then I was going why are we crossing this because if you look at the strikers we've had Hogan, Morpé, Vibe they're all yeah. quite small and they're, they're kind of more in and around the box kind of players so it's, we don't we don't seem to cross the ball too much but that game we did and it was it was a nice but it was, yeah. again it wasn't it was more on the counter it wasn't right we've got bodies in the box let's lump it in and stuff it's always kind of measured it's, it's, it's a bit different but yeah, you'll play slick, quick football, but be prepared for just a lot of games where you'll have all the ball and teams will be so hard to break you down. It'd be a pleasant challenge to have the ball, down. to be honest. How, how, how long do you reckon it'll take him to implement this? Because I'm not naive enough to think he's going to come in and straight away we're going to be we're going to be playing that nice football. It's obviously no, yeah. going to take, take time. How long, I suppose you were already playing nice football, so it's a bit different, but how, yeah. how long do you think it will take him to implement what he wants to do? Like you say, don't expect miracles straight away. We we played Walsall not long after he arrived. Yeah. And we lost to them in the cup, yeah. and they were loving it. And it was like, all right, is this is going to like? If we kind of had a bit of a whiff for it, but I'd say it, it took a, it took a good few months. Um, but you've got a lot of players that will have played this football at other clubs that would have played quick, slick football. I imagine there's not too many people who might have to shift or kind of retrain. But then again, to be fair, we just like need some say, defenders. We, yeah, I think. That, that's an interesting thing with Dean being a centre half yeah. himself I think he'll bring on and you've got John Terry there so yeah. I, th- I don't think you need to worry too much about your defensive I, th- I think a couple of months I'd be surprised if you weren't fizzing it about and stuff um, I, d- I don't know who you'd have in that quarterback style role it, this might be uh, redundant because he might completely change his formation he might look at your crop of players and go I need to set up a different yeah. way he played three at the back a couple of times with us it didn't work but yeah, he'd struggle to find three centre backs to play to play that with <laughs> us. To me. I like that formation, but I, yeah. I, like Sheffield United, do that very well. Really but well, yeah. he'd struggle to to play that with us at yeah, the moment. So I, th- I think I, I think a couple of months. Yeah, if that, I think you'll start. I think you'll start seeing it straight away. You'll see confidence straight away. Yeah, because he'll encourage players to get on the ball and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And he'll encourage the flair players like Balassi to to showcase their skills. We had a lad Ben Rama, who was just constantly on a maze up or pulling something off and he was always encouraged to do so obviously in the right areas yeah but um i think you'll see an immediate change and then it will just get better and better and the one that Grealish is just the one straight away that stands out for me that's going to have a field day yeah because he was very very good last season Grealish he was probably the best player in the league yeah. the second half of last season but this season like all the villa players it, it's, it's been a struggle we haven't seen anything yeah. of him so if he can be freed up yeah. i'd imagine like you say you'll you'll go very well the for other him. thing because you've obviously got three Phenomenal strikers for that league. Abraham, oh, Abraham Kudjar, very good. and Hogan. We were always kind of two strikers in the whole squad at the most. At the moment, we've kind of got one and Marcus Force beating that that's been promoted. And Watkins has played up front, Canos has played up front. So you never know, he might go to up front with you guys because you have got three class yeah. players. You don't know because you don't want to be looking on the bench and you've got Codger and Abraham on the bench each week. I'd be surprised if they'd be happy with that. And No. Nah. Because you, you expect Hogan to play now, don't I'd you? I'd be surprised yeah. if Hogan wasn't, if not straight away thrown in, but he'll be, you'd think he'll be playing yeah. soon. Um, yeah. What's he like with, because you've talked about he likes to play with this deep lying midfielder, so our better, better ball playing midfielders are probably McGinn and Horahan, who are more box to box game forward. Does he like to try and change players? So for Horahan, for example, he might say, I want you to be that deep midfielder that pops the ball off. Well, McEachern actually wrote uh, was in an article today in the Football League paper, and I spoke to him because he, I spoke to him. He played number ten for us quite a lot. Yeah, and he said he, he prefers playing deeper. And at, at first, he was playing like quite a lot higher. I think straight away, I think Hurahan will probably would be more suited to that. I think McGinn, from look at watching you guys, McGinn's a bit more all action. But yeah, a bit more ter- terrier. Yeah, so I think I'd be. He's more like your Woods and your McEachern. We had Wood, Woods and McEachern were kind of rotated and yeah. suspended or they'd come in for each other. Um, and then it was kind of... So you'd have McEachern and then McLeod or Yanaris kind of in your face a bit more and box to box. And then Sawyer's, it was kind of your number 10. It was almost like a staggered three centre midfielders in okay. there kind of thing. But the McEachern... Uh, sorry, the McLeod or the Yanaris they'd push on a lot more than McEachern and Woods would just sit in front and just metronome it. I think I think I think that I think you could retrain so he did, he didn't do that so much with us. Makocho never kind of did that role. McE- uh, I've seen Yunaris do it pretty well. Yeah. Um he used to be a right back, didn't he? Yunaris. Yeah, so he yeah. played right back and I think he was originally to be fair a centre half, but he's kind of one of those players that suffers with his versatility. Yeah. So because he can play right back, he's even played left back for us. He's been kind of pushed around a bit. 
but yeah, immediately I'd suggest it was suge- it suggested me that Hurahan would play that role, having watched him. Yeah. I don't know if then you miss out on his qualities further. He's good goal because he's a good goal scorer. He's good yeah. for a goal. But a lot of so McEachran would play through the lines a lot. Yeah. He had, he's had a, he, well, he does play through the lines a lot. He's got a, a wand on him, and he can he can cut through two, three lines and into the Sawyer's or Morpe. So yeah. that if you've got someone that can do that, I don't know if if Hurahan, I imagine has got those capabilities. Yeah, he's a good passer. Good passer. Um, so you need someone that is just going to be composed on the ball. Good pass, and also someone that is happy to pick the ball up in tight spaces, because those players would often have two, three around them, and they'd wiggle out of it. Like Woods was phenomenal at that, and Josh this year has been yeah. incredible at that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's gotten that Woods has gone in in the summer. For you I'd have liked him. I've always liked he, him. He'd straight away be the one I, I'd have been surprised because I know him and Dean Smith had a great relationship as well. But yeah, I, I could see him retraining certain players to play yeah. in certain positions. I think you'll need a striker that can play into feet as well. Hogan obviously can do that. Yeah, I imagine Abraham and Cosby Abraham's got a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. he's a good player. They, but they do like the strikers to be able to play into the feet of. Um, so yeah, I, I think looking at I, I'd straight away Hurahan for me, but maybe you'll get someone in. I don't know. Do you worry about losing players in January? I mean, we're not really sure where we stand with financial fair yeah. players to be honest. But would you worry about losing some players to us? I had this discussion with someone this morning and you kind of alluded to the fact that you need centre-halves. I don't think we'll lose a centre-half to you, purely because, and this is no disrespect, I think Chris Meffin will be looking, if he leaves us, to go to the Premier League, yeah. if he does go. I don't know if he will go. Esri Konsa, who's been incredible for us so far, has only just joined in the summer, so I'd be very surprised if he moves on straight away. Yeah. Julien jean has only just joined in the summer as well, so he won't move. Barbe, potentially, maybe, but I'm, I'm not sure if... You'd be looking in for for Barber. I don't know. We could he do the left back. back. Well, he's playing left back as well. Yeah. Yeah. He what about Rico be... Henry? Because he's been, was with him at Warsaw and of he's course. now with him at so Brentford. That, straight away, that Rico and Sawyer's are two that we kind of go well. We know that he likes them. He yeah. did well for him at Warsaw. Rico's only come back from an ACL injury. He hasn't okay. played this year, so I'd be surprised. But he's only unfortunately played, I think, maybe thirty games for us. Yeah, he's been like injured that. a lot. He's been injured a lot. So I think I'd hope we'd keep hold to hold of Rico. Um, Sawyer's would be the one that I was worried about but then I think you've got such an abundance of quality in that area I don't know who you think would play the number 10 role I don't know if it would be I'd be like, I did first name on the team should yeah so because yeah. that would be the one that straight away Sawyer's and Sawyer's and yeah I can't and, say it's coming in for Sawyer's to yeah. be honest because we've got a kid called O'Hare that was the other thing I wanted to ask you actually right. what about promoting from within and promoting Brilliant. the academy really good fantastic so you yeah. see straight away Chris Metham who only made his debut at the start of last season. Now he's playing regularly for Wales. Been talking yeah, about him for Wales. He, yeah. he's, he's he's a colossus and he's so good positionally. He, he's unbelievable player. Probably one of the best centre halves we've had. And Tarkovsky we've had recently. He he's lost to Egan as well, didn't you? To Sheffield Egan United. In the summer, but I think because of the emergence of Mepham, the departure of Egan was wasn't as bad. I mean, I didn't even mention him weirdly when I said about the window because Egan was phenomenal for us. Don't yeah. wrong. But we had Mepham. We had Jean Vier coming in, who's been like team of the year in France's League Two last year and stuff. So I think young player wise, he's always promoted. He's promoted two lads this summer again from our B team. It's a bit different for us because we don't have a yeah. youth team. We have a B team, so they're all players that are kind of dropped out from other league uh, teams, or we've signed them actively from other teams. Um, but he's he's given chances to to a lot of them. There's a we have a board like most teams do of who's kind of made their debut, and in the last yeah. few years. There's so many of them. Zane Westbrook played against Fulham. Reese Coles made appearances. Chris Metham, uh, Justin Shabu, Marcus Force have been promoted. He scored in the uh, League Cup this year. Sorensen made an appearance in the League Cup. So there's seven uh, straight away. Henry Balcom's had. been on the bench and stuff. He, he's he's not afraid to 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 give you a chance if you're good enough. But the difference is obviously we had this B team where maybe a lot of the players are a bit more prepared for first team football yeah. because. They're a bit older, a lot of them, some are like 20, 21, whereas a lot of Houston players might be 18. But, yeah, I mean, I've heard you speak about O'Hare before. Yeah, he's a good player. And um, if he's technical... And I, I don't Very think he, technical. I don't, think, I don't think he'd have any qualms putting someone like that in. Um, and I think also being a Villa lad himself, he'll see pride in yeah. seeing the local talent and the, the youth team players coming through. Um, and also bear in mind that he worked at the Nike Academy before Walsall. So okay. he, he's been heavily involved in developing young players, and we've seen these young players get so much better. It's unbelievable. And again, 
obviously that's down to Kevin O'Connor as well and Lars Fries and Rob Rowan and but he's obviously had a huge influence because I spoke to players that have said when they've been at the B team how many times they've joined with the first intrigue. I know that happens at a lot of clubs, but yeah. obviously he has an influence and he, they've all said that when they've made the move up how brilliant the gaffer has been. Um so yeah, I think I think you'll see a lot a lot more youth coming through if your squad's not too top heavy or in certain areas. A lot of a couple of the youngsters who might have got to go at the back are, are on loan, which is a bit annoying because that that's where where we're short, but we are we're quite heavy in midfield. Well, that's and it. I mean, so straight away you say at the back, so people would say, oh, but um, do you give a do you give a twenty year old a chance at centre half in the championship? Our centre backs are twenty and twenty one, I think. Yeah, they they they're both really young. Um, it, it, he doesn't he doesn't mind age wise if you're good enough. You're old enough. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't mind. So, like I say, we've got we've at times played ridiculously young sides, and it's some people have said that's our downfall because we are too young and too inexperienced. But I think it's been brilliant. And I think that that's kind of way our model's been anyway. You bring yeah. in young, and people are talking about Morpay. I look at him and you forget that he's 21. Like he he's so seasoned, and the way he he don't get me wrong. Everyone hates him in the league, apart from us. No, but you, you talk but, about him. He's, he's one I can tell you straight away. He came to Villa Park last last season, yeah. and he had a, two or three really good chances, and, yeah. he, and he didn't put them away. Yeah. Then, then he comes back the next season, oh, he's and like he's Manchester, scoring two. Yeah. He's clinical. Yeah. 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 So you can see that that, that yeah. tells me there's an improvement in him. Exactly. And I think with him, again, like last year, he was only 20, and he's made a big move abroad to a big league, playing yeah. big teams. Yeah. It's hard league. Yeah. And this year, now everyone's going, "Hang on, who's Neil Morpay?" And it's like, well, he was there last year. Yeah, I remember. He, him. he was like went under the radar last year. Yeah. And yeah, so he'll he'll bring on the the young players like he has with more pay and Metham and yeah, it, it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting. What's the the best thing about Dean Smith? If you had to pinpoint one thing that was the, the best thing about having him as your Brentford manager, what what would you <sighs> narrow it down to? And that's a bit of a difficult question. Just one thing. It's, that's because <sighs> immediately I'm going the slick football. Yeah was just incredible it'd be hard not to say that but he just kind of he made you quite proud to be a Brent fan the way he spoke to people and yeah. I know that sounds silly because it shouldn't obviously you support a football team you want the football team to win but no, but you want it to be you want it to be like that you want, yeah. it, you want to be proud of your club and I've had people here who've done shoots at Brentford and they always come back and say what an amazing man your gaffer is and yeah. I've never heard a bad word said about it and look, that, I know that stuff doesn't win your leagues but it goes a long way for especially again, I don't want to suggest too much, but from a club that's maybe having a few issues like fans yeah, and, and the club rowing and stuff, and yeah, it's not maybe it's very a bit united. Split and he's united. Our club is so united, and he's such a great figurehead in that regard. That he is so personable, he's so gracious. You'll never hear him like moaning and stuff to refs and stuff. Don't get me wrong, he gets it gets the ump. If, if yeah. something goes against him, he's not going to go. Oh, I'm not going to say anything, but. He just does it. His demeanour and everything, the way he does it is just so gracious and lovely and personable. And he just kind of unified the club. And the club is pretty unified as it is, but he just, I don't know, it just, especially for us being such a family club, you could see he had real pride for us. And he, he doesn't support us, so I imagine what he's going to be like. That's what I was going to say. Does he take it up another, another level? Yeah. The fact that he is a Villa fan. Exactly. So he, he seems so proud to work with us. For you, it's going to be incredible. Um, and yeah, so I think. The football probably is the first one, but not far behind is just the man himself, the way he carries himself, the way he speaks to people, the way he has the relationships he forms and stuff with fans, players. We have this thing where we walk to the... It's a big thing that's always been there. They walk from a hotel to the stadium. Yeah, yeah. He will stop for every person. And I know that people say that they should do that, but he really will talk to so many people. And not just, hello, how are you? He'll... Ask questions. He goes. He, there's no. He, he's such a brilliant man. I think yeah. that's one thing that. Yeah, you've just got such a lovely, lovely guy there as well. And look, some people say the nice guy doesn't win, but this one does. He does win. Well, mate, it sounds. You've, you've sold him to me. I was. <laughs> yeah. I was already pretty sold to be honest, but now, now you've completely. And it's weird. So, you know, I'm. I'm. So, I'm so happy for him. And look, that's I, rare. Yeah. Stuff like that is rare in football. That you'd yeah. be. You'd be happy for your manager leaving and going to his, even if it's his boyhood team. Yeah, I think that's rare. And I think, look, like I've alluded to, it's easier for me to say that when I think the club is in such good hands. Yeah, there's times where you think the, the wheels are going to fall off and it's going to be horrific, but I don't think it will be this time. I think learning from the last two experiences, I think we should be all right. I yeah, think, but like Warburton was already at the club after Rosler. He left halfway through the season. We got promoted that season. So yeah, 
it, it's, it, this doesn't mean it's going to be right. Season's over. Start again. Let's wait for next season because it's the start of a project and. That keeps being the word, the project, the project. But well, that's what we need because we've yeah. been too far too short term at yeah. Villa, and someone, a, a team like Brentford, is, is an example to Villa of doing things the, the right way and doing things properly and trying to be innovative because that's yeah. what we we haven't done. Yeah. So it, it feels good to be honest to, to bring him in. Well, we have we have a culture, we have a blueprint, and it's an identity. That's the big thing that yeah. he said about us, and he was part of that identity, and I'm sure he'll try and create an identity at Villa. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be the same it might be different because I think our identity works really well with the size of club we are as well you might have to tweak it for the the size and the stature of Aston Villa Um, but yeah I'd be really excited if I was you guys I'm still excited about our season the dream is you know top two us champions, you second. <laughs> no, I was going to say if we can, if we can both go up. I got a lot of time. I like Brentford. Obviously, living around here, I've got, yeah. got a lot of time for Brentford. Ideal world. We both go up. But That'd be amazing. You know how these things work. We'll probably <laughs> have each other in the playoff final, exactly. and one of, one of us goes be, home gussy. Each other in February and not right at the end. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cheers for coming on. No, really, thanks, really man, appreciate man. it, mate. Cheers. Cheers for that. Nah. Yep, do a quick outro. This is not my strong point, but I'll do one <laughs> anyway. If you're not already subscribed to the Villa View with your post notifications on, then make sure you're doing that. We try and bring you as much good content as possible. And if you missed the podcast that we recorded earlier today with me and Tom Julian, then make sure you're checking that out. Give the video a like if you're pleased to miss Join Villa and you have enjoyed this video. And leave a comment below with your thoughts. Leave Stu's hair alone <laughs> as well. Save the hair jobs for Dolan. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. Stick with the channel. Stick with the Villa of the Villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not? watch another. Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy pleaser.